Hey there, I'm Eddie O'Donnell, and welcome to my shop in a closet. So, I've got my friend Joe here with me. Once again, we've got another product, a project, that's perfect for some tried and true. So tell us a little bit about this guy. Uh, this is a really simple bench I made in a class, uh, again, at Makeville Studios. Um, playing with the fun art of Shosugiban, or Yakisugi. Um, the same Japanese characters, basically it means a burned cedar plank or board. This isn't cedar, this is big box lumber we use to make a simple little bench. Just glued together, though I might add some joinery to it just to help with the strength and cover up some of the gaps there. Um, but yeah, burned the heck out of the uh, bench top with a propane torch, had a lot of fun doing it and decided not to go with a wire brush. A lot of times with Shosugi Bon as a finish, you're gonna brush off a lot of the charcoal. I like the look of the crackled alligator kind of kind of skin going on there. And so we want to see what's gonna happen when we use some uh, Danish oil over this just like it is. Yeah, no, um, I really, I agree. I, I do like this, um, the crackled surface that you get. You get a really nice sheeny surface as well. Um, that burning brings out all that carbon in the wood and puts this really lovely dense layer on the top here. And yeah, something like Danish oil is going to be a great idea for something like this because the oil is really going to soak in and it's going to enact with that really, really tough hardened surface and really bring out all the character that's sitting sort of hidden in there under all the blackening. Um, so I, I think this is a great way to put a real sort of nice... Um, popping finish on here and at the same time because you have burned the surface you've already created a layer of protection on there with right. that layer of carbon that's get, that gets created so i think this is going to be really cool this is going to be really simple but as of right now we're just we're just going to finish this part of it right here that is the cooked part so to speak <laughs> yeah so sugiban was uh actually kind of developed as a way to finish uh, wood in Japan, starting with cedar house siding uh, as a way of protecting it. Uh, it makes it resistant, not 100% impervious yeah. to, but resistant to moisture, to rot, yeah. to bugs and critters, as well as, importantly in Japan, obviously, fire. Right. So it makes the wood dense, takes all the moisture out, and makes a pretty cool bench to sit on. But unless you finish it with something, you get a very carbony butt. Let's jump right in. All right, let's dive right into it. And we're looking at the bottom of it right now because that's where we're going to start start our finishing journey here. If so, it's not obvious, this is my first time playing with Shosugi Bon and just wanted to point out a couple of good learning moments I had. Uh, you can see areas where, and this is some I'm still getting better at. Now, to be fair, in my defense, it was 8,000 degrees outside. It is the summer in New York City. And we were using propane torches, so I wasn't thinking quite right. And you can see areas where I had glue squeeze out that I didn't catch. And this is what happened some of those areas when we put the torch over it. The other maybe don't do as Joe does moment is don't keep it in the trunk of your car, getting banged around with stuff, causing some of these scratches and gouges out uh, for a week or so because you'll get that. I did notice, however, when we flipped it over, that there's this one area where the charcoal was actually rubbed off a bit. It actually looks absolutely beautiful underneath, so I'm kind of tempted to, to rub the rest off. But since we have the nice alligator skin, I think we'll go with it and see what the Danish oil does to it. And uh, yeah, see how it looks. Yeah, so a couple of things to think about in that particular mindset. When we're applying this, of the many ways you can apply oil finishes, one of the ways that I tend to like the most is using some sort of abrasive, whether it's wet or dry sandpaper, or something like a white pad, or even some of the gray pads, or in the most caustic of times, I've used uh, some of the green scotch bright pads that you actually get on the back of your sponges. Some of those methods I really like for digging sort of oils into the surface of the wood. As you're abrading the surface, you create a nice slurry. In this case, because we have this carbon layer, we're going to end up peeling that up if we did that, and you get more of a surface like this area here. Um, and that is certainly a different look. So in this case, I think going just with a rag is going to be the best way to get this stuff to uh, get a nice good layer on there. Obviously, we're, the glue is not going to go away, and the trouble with this finish is that traditionally where you would scrape that glue away um, or sand that glue away, you can't do that because you'll be removing the Shosugi Bond, and unless you want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive right into this guy right here. We'll open up our can, 
and we'll pour a little bit of this out for us to work with. What kind of Danish oil are we using there? So we're using tried and true Danish oil. Now Danish oil is a super big, weird terminology. It's a name that doesn't really refer to anything. It refers to some kind of oil. And that's really it. Uh, a lot of a lot of companies will have Danish oils that are mixed with varnishes, uh, like the Watco Danish oil is tongue oil mixed with a certain amount of polyurethane. Other oils will have um, mixtures of varnish, wax, oil. At the end of the day, there's no strict recipe. Um, so when you're picking up a can of Danish oil, read the back. Super important detail. In this particular case. The tried and true is just their polymerized linseed oil. That's all it is that's in there, there's nothing else. So essentially, we're finishing this with pure boiled linseed oil, quote unquote. All right, so we'll pour a little bit of this out into here. Now it's probably not the best to pour right over your project, but in this particular <laughs> case, I wanted to get it in focus for the camera there. Eddie O'Donnell, living life on the edge. So with our oil here, and as you can see, I've made a tool out of my rag. That's a really important thing to do that a lot of people forget, is to actually turn this into something that you're gonna use as an applicator. You don't just ball it up and dip it in there. You don't need a ton of it. You don't want the rag saturated and finish and having all this finish in this rag that you can't use. You just wanna get enough on there and be able to get enough on there that you can start laying down Wow. A nice thin coat of finish. Notice you're not going with the customary circulates or infinity symbols that you do with so many other finishes. No, in this particular case, I'm more focused on going with the grain, particularly for this reason. As it's leaving an incredible residue on there, I'm trying to go with the grain as much as possible to reduce any fighting from the grain. I, would, I don't want to pull anything up. I also don't want to smudge anything around. So one thing that's amazing is that without brushing the surface in any way, it's actually not a lot of color shift as this goes on. You're not getting that same drastic look that you might when you normally add something like a linseed oil to a surface. In fact, the question really is, are, are you, you just rubbing? <laughs> What's that? Are you getting much linseed oil on there at all? Yeah, which indicates that maybe we should just try pouring a little on and spreading it around. Now, generally speaking, we want to keep these applications as thin as possible, but that is all dependent on how thin this becomes as the wood soaks it in, which it seems to be soaking it in very readily. Wow, yeah, that's gone. Yeah. Now, part of that is that you certainly demoisturized it when you cooked right. it, so. <laughs> So you just poured a lot more on there. That's because you saw how quickly it was absorbed and how thirsty the wood was. Exactly. This is a different method from some of the ways that I tend to recommend. Usually I don't tend to want to be as aggressive when applying oils like this, because if you do end up accidentally leaving a really thick layer of this stuff on, it can get really goopy and messy and you can end up with uh, a big problem with your project that way. Thin coats are generally the way to go overall. But in this particular case, I'm just trying to make sure that enough of this is spread around in enough places that we're getting nice even coverage everywhere. So it looks like, I mean, you can definitely tell areas where it's much thicker and kind of not absorbing in anymore. Absolutely. As opposed to some areas where it's, it's already dry to the touch. Right. So in these particular cases, I think a lot of people would be inclined to say, all right, well, those places that don't look wet, I'd like to add finish there. And I, right. I would say go in the opposite direction. Now that we've seen the places that it soaks in, I'm gonna take off all the other stuff that's still sitting there. One, that's gonna speed up the drying process, but two, it's also going to refine the overall look. It's gonna help us avoid the issues of poor drying and of too much finish trying to dry. But as you can see, just doing that, it already smooths out what this is gonna look like overall. That's really incredible because we haven't lost the alligator crackle. 
but it, it's given it this, I don't know what the adjective I'm looking for is, but this kind of, I guess, finished look to it, mm -hmm. where it doesn't look rough and raw, and like it's gonna come off if you touch it or look at it the wrong way, but it still m retains that really beautiful look that I was hoping for with the Shosugiban in the first place. That's really cool. Like looking on the other sides, which haven't been done yet, you can really see the difference. Knowing that it's going to be protected to some extent, plus the Shosugiban, plus the Danish oil, I'm feeling pretty good about that, and I'm absolutely loving the way it looks. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we should, uh, yeah, let's keep going with it. Let's flip this guy over and do the talk. <laughs> 